Silicon Graphics isn't a household name these days, but in the 1980s and early to mid 90s, they made a huge contribution to the behind the scenes production of some of the most iconic films and video games out there. But let's back up a bit. Silicon Graphics was founded in 1981 with the express purpose of creating specialized hardware and software, specifically for 3D modeling. These weren't your average home computers. These machines were extremely expensive and purpose-built for professionals in design, machinery, and 3D animation, which was still in its earliest stages. Since home PCs were still years away from comparable results, business was booming and Silicon Graphics found plenty of success among professionals. While Silicon Graphics thrived during the 80s and early 90s, they found themselves losing a significant amount of business when 3D technology began to catch up to them on the much more affordable Windows and Intel-based home machines. With the commercial availability of 3D accelerated graphics cards becoming a reality for both the average consumer and professionals, the demand for Silicon Graphics and their hugely expensive workstations decreased. Silicon Graphics still had a user base of pros who needed a substantial amount of power, more so than what the more affordable 3D accelerated graphics cards could offer but it's fair to assume that they were feeling the sting of a new rival on the horizon. With the rise of more affordable 3D tech, Silicon Graphics decided to reach into a market filled with untapped potential for their advanced hardware and software, video games. While PC games had already begun the trek into 3D with pioneers like Doom, consoles were still lagging behind, only offering relatively rudimentary 3D in comparison to what was available on PC. A new generation in console games was starting, and Silicon Graphics was determined to contribute. To do so, Silicon Graphics first approached Sega with a new chip that would offer more power than what was generally available to many consoles. Though it wasn't the revolutionary 3D hardware Silicon Graphics had been known for, it was quite a leap ahead from the 16-bit generation. While the pitch to Sega of America was very successful, Sega of Japan wasn't quite as impressed. Ultimately, Silicon Graphics was rejected by Sega, leaving them to either give up on the chip entirely or approach another company. Silicon Graphics chose the latter. The next company Silicon Graphics chose to approach was Nintendo. In the 16-bit generation, Nintendo had worked with Sony, Philips, and Argonaut Games. While the deal with Sony was botched and Philips delivered notoriously bad games using Nintendo IPs, previous collaborations proved that Nintendo wasn't necessarily against working with others. When Silicon Graphics pitched their chip to Nintendo, they were greeted with much better reception than what they got from Sega of Japan. Nintendo accepted the offer and the two were officially in business. The result of the partnership between Silicon Graphics and Nintendo is known as Project Reality, and eventually the Ultra 64. To help promote the console in the years before release, Cruisin' USA and Killer Instinct were released in arcades in 1994, touting Ultra 64 hardware. This stretched the truth a bit, with the arcade hardware actually being more advanced and in some ways very different than what was used in what the Ultra 64 would amount to. Regardless, the technical showcases in arcades claiming to use Ultra 64 hardware were a big promotional boost for Nintendo and Silicon Graphics, leaving many Nintendo fans eagerly anticipating their next major console release. By 1996, they got their wish, with the final result being released as the Nintendo 64 worldwide. Silicon Graphics contributed a custom variant of the MIPS R4000 CPU, a reference to which Nintendo included in their own Super Mario 64. Nintendo 64 game development was also carried out using Silicon Graphics indie workstations. Needless to say, the collaboration between Nintendo and Silicon Graphics was a huge success, and even though Sony had a leg up on Nintendo with the PlayStation, both Nintendo and Silicon Graphics benefited greatly from their partnership. Even with all their success and monumental contributions to 3D technology, Silicon Graphics wasn't sustainable in the long run. With the rapid growth of advanced GPUs and home computers, Silicon Graphics found themselves losing more and more business, finally filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2009. Even though Silicon Graphics isn't around any longer, their legacy continues to be felt to this day, especially in their contribution to one of the biggest evolutions in video game history. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.